Good evening and welcome to round 21 of the National Premier Leagues, coming to you from the banks of the Bremer River at North Ipswich Reserve. Tonight, Western Pride play host to Moreton Bay Jets as the NPL New Boys seek to close out successful first seasons in the competition with a win. It promises to be a mid-table battle full of physicality, so let's cross to Rafe Griffin in the commentary box with all tonight's action. Good on you, Michael. Hello, everyone. All oh, with the guard of honour there from the Western Pride junior players. Those little fiery explosions certainly taking them off guard. Here's tonight's team lineups, everyone. For the Western Pride, Russell Woodruff and Peter Drager back in tonight's side after they were missing in the loss to CQ last week. Referee for tonight's match is Ben Cook. He's assisted by David Hazlitt and Renee Coghill. And it's the Western Pride to get us underway in this first half. Christensen plays it back. Pride now look forward. Dragers on the ball, confronted by two defenders and wins the free kick. Lost there by Morton Bay. Jordan looking for Woodruff. Woodruff on the edge of the box, plenty of yellow shirts there. Pride able to continue on. Drager at the back post, Radovanovic comes. Gets there in time just before rule. Western Pride certainly dominating possession in this first 10 minutes. Hoofed up field. Woodruff comes in and sneaks it. He's got Drager in the middle. Woodruff the ball in, aimed for Drager at the far post. One again by the Pride. Heavy challenge there. Free kick to the Pride. Ball into the box. Radovanovic forced to tip it over. Ball's in from the corner. Claims of handball. Referee Cook has nothing of it. Brownlee fighting for the ball, wins himself a throw-in. Well, Brownlee almost comes in and sneaks that. Played on there by Kai Marama, but Pride come up with it. Jets again in possession. Kai Marama and Brownlee ahead of him. Saved there by Purdy. McAvoy. Or straight into Drager. Drager heads towards the box around his man, Drager. He puts it past Radovanovic. And puts the Western Pride ahead 1-0 on 18 minutes. On the replay, McAvoy with the clearance. Was aimed at one of his fellow teammates, but Drager was in the way. Gets round the defender in Schumach and then pass Radovanovic. Woodruff heads it on. Drager now or falls over. And the referee is going to wield a free kick here. Let's take a look at that on the replay. Oh, just on the edge of the box, looked like Schumach might have fouled. Drager, the two number 13s coming together. Consulting with the Assistant here. Is this about it, whether it's in the box or not, or...? Well, the end result is it's going to be a pride free kick on the edge of the box, but Brownlee's going to be called out. Has a bit of a chat too. Is this just a general warning, or has Brownlee said something to the assistant? Pointing here from Lincoln Rule. Whatever it is, uh, we're going to let play continue. Jordan with the free kick. Oh, beat the wall. Couldn't quite get it inside the net. Livingston dispossessed. Played backwards now. Comes all the way back to Purdy. Oh, ends up controlling it with his feet. Brownlee confronted there. Oh, I think he's got one in the orchestra straws there. Yes, he's gone down. I'm sure my fellow men know it's never a pleasant feeling when something like that happens.
Pride with their 1-0 advantage. Certainly making the most of the possession they've had so far in this first half. Hoofed upfield by Purdy. Headed on. Pride again looking dangerous. Here's Drager again. Drager beats Renovanovic. 2-0 the Pride. And the Flames go off again. Oh, he's been in great goal-scoring form in the second half of the season, has Peter Drager. And that's a double for him. Pass Radovanovic, empty net, Pride 2-0. Wharton Bay, what can they conjure up here before half-time? Nothing at the moment, Woodruff. On for that man, Drager. Drager gets to the edge of the box, probably a heavy touch, Radovanovic. Takes it easily in the end. Plays it quickly. Drager. I know I've been calling him a lot, but he's had the ball a lot as well. Oh, Radovanovic forced to save there in front of Woodruff. Morton Bay corner, headed away. Comes in towards the centre. McAvoy. Can't control it. Purdy with the goal kick. Contested ball. Morton Bay come up with it for Brownlee. Brownlee! Oh, straight up Purdy is shot though. McAvoy. Tried to play it on for McNeil. Drager picks it up. McNeil and Drager in a bit of a battle. Free kick here to the Pride. Oh, I'd imagine a yellow card here as well. There it is. Free kick from Jordan. Oh, it's high and handsome over the bar. And that's half time here at the North Ipswich Reserve. Western Pride 2. Lead the Morton Bay Jets nil as we continue with second half action now. I see Moses Joseph is on for the for the Jets. Ball's played in for Joseph. Not enough power. Jordan. Woodruff. Back for Jordan, the 1 2. Jordan's got Drager as his target. Drager, edge of the box. Drager, can he make it a hat trick? No. Great defence there by McAvoy. Maria promotes it for Brownlee. On for Joseph. Joseph dispossessed. Great defence there from the Pride. Corner here to the Jets. Ball's played in. Oh, straight up uh, Purdy. He's able to handle it eventually. A fumble. Goal mouse scramble ensues. And Pride. Get away with it. Ball's played on. McAvoy. All forces Purdy into another save. The winner corner here, the Jets. And Brownlee's got a head on it. Brownlee's brought one back here for the Jets. On the replay, the corner comes in. Brownlee didn't know a lot about it. Didn't matter. Purdy couldn't grab it. Brownlee, the goal scorer, 2-1. To the pride now the score. Brownlee again strongly on the ball. Cleared away by the pride. Jordan on for Woodruff. These two combining well tonight. Jordan with a run of his own down the left. And he was tackled there by Sabello. Free kick here to the pride. Woodruff tries to curl it in. Headed away before it gets to Radovanovic. And ends up out for a goal kick. Brownlee. Brownlee with a dangerous run. Brownlee forces Purdy to save. Morton Bay certainly had the better of the possession in this second half. Now completely opposite to the first. Joseph. Brownlee! Cracking goal there from Royce Brownlee. Gave Purdy no chance. On the replay, 
Comes off the top of the bar. Joseph picks it up. Looks to see who's there. Royce Brownlee is. And it's 2 2. Throw into the pride. Woodruff for Jordan. Headed away by Sorbello. Shot comes in. No, we're going to have a free kick. Let's take a look at that. Sorbello gets the ball away. Comes to a Western Pride player. Not sure what happened there, to be honest. Pride in attack again. Great save by Radovanovic. Pride with a second effort. Rule. Tackled there by Joseph. Joseph's going to win the ball and Joseph will win a free kick. Tug on the shirt. Lincoln Rule, the yellow card. Played by McAvoy. In Brownlee's direction. Well, when he's already scored two, why wouldn't you go in that way? Joseph forced to go back for it. Puts a cross in. Cleared away from danger. 30 seconds of normal time remaining. Can the Pride get a winner here? Shot comes in. Not on this occasion. Now we've got something on the replay. We're looking at an offside decision here. Look to be onside there. Kitching. All danger here for the Jets. Kitching and gets it back again. He's got Woodruff in the centre. Ball into the box. Brownlee. Always dangerous in the air. No free kick. And that's full time here at the North Ipswich Reserve. On a shared between the Western Pride and Morton Bay Jets. To all. Here's Michael to get the views of those involved with the match. Thanks for that, Rafe. I'm speaking with Terry Kirkham, head coach of Morton Bay Jets. Terry, it was an impressive second half comeback there. Your thoughts on the result and the performance? Oh, the, um, look, you know, the draw was worthy. Um, you know, our boys were brilliant to come back and, and work as hard as they did. We had to change the structure and, and they've adapted very well and, um, you know, very, very pleased for the boys. It's getting near the end of the season now. It's been an impressive first year for Jets. Um, I'm very impressed with the youth policy. Can we expect more of the same next year? Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of things to work on and what's going to happen between now and pre-season is going to be interesting because with the NPL now starting to take note, there's a lot more interest and I'm getting certainly a lot of interest from a lot of players from from around the northern side of Brisbane, which was good. So, you know, I think that um, I think we need to go through a pre-season stage. I think we're going to probably look at where the under-20s and the under-18s sit. Our, our juniors from the 15s, 16s down has been very strong. And I think the, uh, you know, certainly from a first-team level, uh, looking at 19, 20, 21-year-olds throughout the northern region, I think we're going to get a lot more interest. And then hopefully that gives us a lot more depth and a lot more talent to work with. And uh, you're a reasonably well-travelled coach yourself, spending time in the Victorian Premier League and the old Brisbane Premier League. What's your thoughts on the standards of the NPL this year and the competition in general? Look, for me personally, um, I, I think the NPL has been very good and I've been very happy to work in it. And, um, you know, and, and my boys have been brilliant. We, we train a lot more uh, and, uh, and they're dedicated to do that. Um, you know, just dietary things. There's a lot more things that, that I've taken in this year in the NPL that I'm happy to work with, and that's the level, certainly, of players that I want to work with. And that's no disrespect for my time in the BBL because it was brilliant and, and we all had a great time. And, uh, but certainly the focus on bringing the younger talent through and the boys training at a regime where they're not getting paid full-time money um, and, you know, and, they're, and they're really earning a lot of money. Um, but the boys want to be there. They want to be professionals. And when I look at our club now, Josh South has been a perfect case in point. A fantastic lad that's come through from North Pine, you know, as a junior, and they must be very pleased for him, to Peninsula Power through the Premier League. He was playing reserve team football last year, and two years ago he was playing first team football, and then straight into the NPL, and now he's uh, in the Wellington Phoenix. And, you know, our younger players, Mitch Schumach, uh, you know, all the boys at our club now really look up to Josh. He was in our change room tonight, 
And, uh, you know, a lot of people must take note of that. And I think a lot of boys now will, will take the MPL very seriously. Steve, a bit of a shame to concede two in the second half tonight, but it was a good performance otherwise, don't you believe? Yeah, I think, I think we all played pretty well. I mean, we've done pretty well recently going up 2-0. Uh, a little bit of, you know, nerves uh, being in the second half as usual, um, but something that we can overcome as well, you know, throughout the season and into next season as well. There's a lot of very talented strikers in this league. Keeps you on your toes as a goalkeeper, I imagine. Absolutely. I mean, there's especially tonight, you know, a good, a good finish um, all around. And, you know, i just got to be on my toes at all times. And that's just, you know, how it is. It's my job, and I like doing it that way. So, uh, Goalkeepers don't do it alone, of course. They've always got a back four. Devin Munn was quite impressive, I thought, tonight. Your thoughts on his development this year? Oh, absolutely. Devin Munn is just, he's a battler. You know, he got winded in the first half and just battled through it the whole game. And, you know, he's been really good for us. His, his left foot's really, really good. He wins every single head ball, so he's been a real help to us. All right. Casey, a bit of a shame to concede two in the second half, but the performance was pretty good, as it has been for the second half of the season this year. Yeah, they you know, really took the game on in the first half, got two goals ahead, and uh, I was hoping they'd go on with it in the second half. So we gave away a cheap one. Um, they played a lot of direct ball in the second half, and uh, we hoped to catch them on the counter again, but um, to no avail. But... Um, you know, uh, an even game in the end, and uh, we'll take a point. Uh, Peter Drager was immense for you guys in the first half. Um, he came off early in the second. What was the reason behind that? Was it a knock, or was it a, a change in the tactics? Yeah, no, he's had a um, bit of an injury with his groins lately, so he didn't come out, come away to Rockhampton last week, um, and he struggled through this one, to be fair, and he was he was still a handful as usual. Um, so, like I said, you know, the boy's an out-and-out -out striker. He knows how to score goals, and uh, we let him do that most weeks. Uh, it's just a matter of keeping him fit and on the field. And uh, back at North Ipswich Reserve tonight, it's a lovely ground to play and watch football at. Um, your thoughts on being back here and hopefully a few more games next year? Yeah, like I said, it's a really good setup. The council have done a great job. Um, hopefully we can get the, the turf just a little, a little shorter because they leave it quite long for the rugby league boys, which we understand. Um, but both codes are getting along you know, famously and um, you know, we're enjoying the, the support of the community and the council are uh, doing a great job. Well, there you have it. A two-all draw here at North Ipswich Reserve. Peter Drager's opening half brace being cancelled out by Royce Brownlee in the second stanza. Next week, we go to Spencer Park, where Brisbane City play host to Redlands United. But until then, you can keep up to date with everything MPL Queensland via Facebook and via Twitter. I'm Michael Flynn, and from the entire MPL Queensland team, we'll see you next time in the National Premier Leagues.